There's nothing wrong with raw meat as long as it's fresh, but it's better cooked. SMSL, however, thinks music is better raw and thought that raw MDA1 is good enough to grace my desktop reference system. At only $279, it's about one-third the price of the other two competitors, the iFi Neo iDSD2 and the Ayun S9 CBT. Those reviews are coming, so make sure you subscribe to be notified when they drop. Become a member if you want to see those videos before they're available to the general public. Now you may be asking another SMSL review, but SMSL makes surprisingly few DAC amp combos. Currently, this is only their sixth one in production. Oh, okay, maybe they do make a lot, but we audiophiles are quite picky about form factor, display, and of course, sound quality. So we'd like to have choices, and SMSL gives us choices. Looking over the unit, we have both a 6.35 millimeter and unbalanced headphone output and a 4.4 millimeter balanced output. The balanced output is specced to output 1.7 watts into 32 ohms. This is just slightly more powerful than the RME ADI2 FS it hopes to replace in my desktop reference system. For those of you who did not watch my last video, the RME has been booted out of my desktop reference system because it was promoted to my Hi-Fi reference system. But I didn't want to replace the RME with another one for two reasons. One, the RME lacks Bluetooth, which I find myself using more and more, mostly in testing products. Now, other than the display itself, the only other item on the SMSL RAW, on the front, that is, is the volume slash menu button. It's plasticky and cheap feeling, but it's very functional. Center click for settings, rotate it to move around, and press once to enter or select the item. We'll take a look at the display after we look at the rear. We've got our balanced, as well as RCA outputs. Inputs include two coax, two optical, a USB-C, and the Bluetooth antenna. One very welcome addition, at least for me, is no power brick. With the power supply built in, I just don't like having a bunch of power bricks sitting around purely for aesthetic reasons. But for some audiophiles, this will allow you to go over to Passion for Audio and Cheap Audio Man and other YouTube channels that will tell you about these power cables and which ones are best. These channels aren't shilling products for endorsements and cash, so you know they really care about their subscribers getting better sound with a $500 or even a $5,000 power cable. Why they never review power bricks is an age-old question even Socrates theorized about, but never came to a conclusion. But unfortunately for you, all my testing was done with the stock power cable provided. Now the Raw MDA-1 is a nice, simple unit with an all-metal shell. Please note that all the pictures of the display still include the plastic protective covering, so it will look even better with that removed. And I nearly forgot to mention, it includes a remote control with a power button, navigation wheel, input selector, a function button which can be programmed for different tasks, a mute button, and volume up and down. The menu is vast, but so easy to navigate. RME, are you watching? Seriously, RME, are you watching? You have the inputs, so you can switch those. Outputs, which you can program the remote's function button to switch. You have PCM filters. It has more filters than a can appear even on one page. Okay, so this is the first minor issue with the interface. It would be nice if a small arrow was pointing down at the bottom, notifying there is more to see on another page. Otherwise, you may just assume that page one has every option available. The gain can be switched between low and high, then it has something called sound color. Options are standard, three rich options, three tube options, and three crystal options. 
In use, the difference between each is minor, but noticeable. My preference is to keep this set to standard and use your own EQ. Pre-mode can be changed from variable to fixed output. Now the function key on the remote is for programming and it's labeled FN. You can set it to switch from line headphone output. You can also use it to cycle between the balanced output, RCA output, which SMSL labels as unbalanced with a U, or just line out, which outputs from both balanced and RCA at the same time. For those of you who have a simple setup like mine, with just balanced outputs going to your desktop speaker and headphones, you'll prefer the option Switch Line HPA, which simply flips back and forth between the two. The last option for the function key is to swap the input to Bluetooth, if that's your preference. DPLL mode can be adjusted from 1 to 15. I seldom have any issues with the quality of my music files because Bush, Bish records at such high levels. So I just set this to 2. The default is 5. USB mode lets you switch from UAC1 to UAC2. Now most modern computers will be using UAC2. UI style. It allows for either a graphical interface display instead of text. I prefer the standard text display. You can notice the clear H on the display when output is set to headphones and not line out. Dimmer should be set to off. If you never want the display off, that may temporarily confuse you as off usually means off but here it means on forever. Otherwise, it can be set from 5 to 60 seconds in increments of 5s, which and then it will then shut off. Brightness has six settings, with the lowest being perfect for working in a lightless environment. I found the two highest settings best in well-lit rooms. And there's a reset option to undo all the damage you just did. Now, I haven't yet looked at the other two products from iFi and Ayun yet, but looking at the SMSL RAW, the layout and design of the display is close to flawless. I say close because maybe I'll see a better display layout from other contenders, but I can't pick out any issues with the SMSL's UI implementation. The display goes from dim to very bright, and pretty much everything is easy to use and change. Now, I don't need an audio precision analyzer to tell you that this DAC is transparent to humans, even my hearing, which is 10 times better than an old English sheepdog. Jitter was non-existent. Timing was spot on. There is nothing any other DAC could do better. The amplifier, well, that's where sound quality hasn't gotten past perfection yet. And on paper, the SMSL has more power on tap than the RME it replaces, but only through the balanced 4.4 millimeter output. And even with that output, power between the two was virtually tied, which is to say you will go deaf listening at maximum output with the SMSL unless you have an extremely inefficient pair of headphones. Dynamics were excellent, falling just short of the RME. No shrilly highs, no issues with bass, this amplifier is dead flat throughout the human hearing range. The only headphone amplifiers I've ever heard that could unmistakably be considered better than what's in the SMSL RAW MDA-1 would be from JDS Labs. Yes, the RME was subtly better, but JDS Labs amps are on another level altogether. It truly makes me wonder what SMSL could produce if they turned this $279 DAC amp into a $1,200 one with the absolutely best parts available. First, we start with a 2020 bottle of V di Roman's Decimi, Pino Grigio. At $57, it is crisp, it is clean, and it is a bargain. And we are going to stick with the raw theme, pairing it with a beautifully laid out variety of sushi. No, not sushi from your supermarket, but real fresh, bursting with flavor sushi. The SMSL RAW lives up to its name and deserves a RAW rating. While this is the cheapest of the three units I'm testing to be my new desktop reference DAC amp, 
the SMSL RAW MDA1 sets the bar high, very high, very high indeed. Let's be honest, SMSL, FIO, JDS, FX Audio, and a host of other companies have changed DACs and headphone amplifiers over the past few years to a level of transparency that few, if any, humans can distinguish. The DAC implementations are transparent no matter if they charge $150 or $2,500. The headphone amplifiers are extremely clean, up to about 90% of their power rating, with total output power itself being the only differentiator between many a unit. Interface and our interaction with the unit, now that is quickly becoming the only real differentiator. And if the JDS Labs Element 3 Ice Edition with its amazing advance and changing gain, had a larger front-facing interface and balanced outputs, it would be sitting atop my reference desktop system right now. But it does not, and the SMSL at 279 is, yes, I'm going to say it, a remarkable piece of engineering. It is definitely in contention to be sitting on my or anyone's desktop reference system. Thanks for watching this episode of the Scientific Audiophile and stay tuned for my reviews of the iFi Neo IDSD2 and Ayun S9C, both of which will be competing against the very high bar SML has set with their raw MDA1. Have a great day.